shouldn't we tell you how Vandiyathevan, who had left us in a boat on the banks of the river, arrived at the home of the soothsayer at that time? Sivapariyar, who objected to all Workadians boarding the boat, when the boat started moving, looked at Vandiyathevan and said, Brother! I let him board because he will go for you. But he must not say that eight-letter name while he is in the river. If he does, I will hold him in this place and tell him to throw him away. The runners are my men. Said. Believing feet. Did it fall on your ears? Vandiyathevan asked. If he didn't say the five-letter name, I wouldn't say the eight-letter name. All Workadians said. Who will stop him from chanting the Panchakara Thira Mantra of Lord Shiva? No. 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 All Workadian began to sing in a loud voice. Shiva Shiva Shiva. Sivar said and put his fingers in both his ears. When Alvar Kadian stopped singing, Sivar removed his fingers from his ears. All Workadian looked at Vandiyathevan and said, Brother. Listen to that heroic savior. Is he going through so much trouble just to hear the name of Tyrimal? This river flows down leaving the lotus feet of Purimal, who has a school in Srirangam. Purimal's Padambata Tirtha is called Puniya Tirtha, Lord Shiva is doing penance in that water at Thiruvani Kaval. Saying that, Saiva Parayar jumped on Alvarkadian with great speed. The two men were fighting on the side of the boat, and the boat seemed to capsize. The runners and Vandiyadeva intervened and drove them away. Devoted Siromani Both of you seem to want to fall into this deluge and go straight to Moksha. But I still have things to do in this world. Vandiyathevan said. One of the runners said, I don't know if you will go to Moksha for sure if you fall into the crocodile. But you can definitely go into the crocodile's stomach. Look at that. He said. At the point he pointed to, a crocodile was seen with its mouth wide open. I have no fear of the crocodile, where is Narayana Murthy, the primordial one who saved Gayendra? All Workadians said. Where has he gone? Perhaps he is hiding under the head of the women's sari of Gopika of Vrindavan. Said Siver. Or Shiva may have had another embarrassment like when he ran away screaming after giving a boon to Padmasura. Thirumal might have gone to save Shiva from that embarrassment, he believed. It seems this Vaishnava has no memory of Thirumal's Karvapangam during Tripura Samhara. Said Saiva Parayar. Swami. I don't know why you are fighting like this. Who has devotion to any deity and worships that deity? Vandiyathevan said. Why did Saiva Parayar and all Workadian fight like that? It would be useful at this point to tell the readers about why a similar battle of arguments took place in Viranarayanapuram. Buddhism and Jainism were influential in ancient Tamil Nadu for about 600 years. Due to this influence, Tamil Nadu gained many benefits. Arts such as sculpture, painting, poetry, epic flourished. Later, Alwars and Nyanmars appeared. They showered the divine Tamil hymns. Vyashnavism and Saivism flourished. Their method of propaganda was very powerful. Along with sculpture, music was also used for religious propaganda. Many people started singing the hymns of the Ashwars and the hymns of the Three Devars arranged to the tune of Devakanam. These musical songs thrilled the hearts of the listeners and instilled devotional fervor. The Vishnu Stalas sung by the Alvars and the Siva Stalas sung by the trio attained new splendor and sanctity. Before that, the temples which were built of brick and wood were renovated and built as Cat Alice. Chola kings and members of the royal family have been doing this Tirupani since the Vijayalaya Chola period. At the same time, a special incident happened in Kerala. A saint appeared at Kaladi. At a young age he renounced the world and became an ascetic. He read all the scriptures in the vernacular. On the basis of Vedic Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Sutra, he planted the banner of Advaita Vedanta. With the help of the knowledge he had acquired in the vernacular, he performed Digvahya throughout the land of Bharata and established eight Advaita monasteries here and there. Advaita Sanyasis who supported his policy spread all over the country. 
Thus there was a great religious upheaval in Tamil Nadu during the time when our story took place i.e. about 980 years ago, written in 1950. Some harmful aspects also emerged from this turmoil. Veera Vaishnavas and Veera Saivas sprang up here and there. They started fighting everywhere. Advaitis also took part in these wars of argument. Sectarian wars sometimes devolved into grassroots fighting. There is a wonderful story that explains the Saiva Vaishnava war of that time. A Srirangata Vaishnava was walking along the outer wall of the Thiruvanai Kaval temple. A stone suddenly fell on the head. He was injured and bled. Vyashnavar looked up. He knew that the stone of the old tower must have collapsed because a crow was sitting on the tower. Immediately he forgot the hurt and pain and became happy. Sriarangata Veera Vaishnava Crow Demolish the Thiruvanai Kaval Shiva Temple well. He said. Such Saiva Vaishnava differences were very prevalent in those days. Knowing this will be very beneficial to continue reading this story later. When Odam reached Akka, Saiva Parayar looked at Alvar Kadayan and said, You will perish. He gave a last curse and went on his way. The warrior of Kadampur who came with Vandiyathevan went to Tirupananda next door and said that he was getting a horse. Alvarkadian and Vandiyathevan sat under the royal tree on the river bank. Hundreds of birds were melodiously chirping in the wide, dense branches of that tree. Vandiyathevan and Nambai wanted to grasp each other's mouths. First they circled around for a while and talked. Why brother? Did you not take me to Kadampur mansion and leave me? Believe me, it is a great hardship for me to go. Really? Then how did you go? Maybe you didn't go. I am gone, I am gone, will you retreat if you intend to do something? The gatekeepers prevented me. I knocked the horse and let him in. All those who prevented me rolled and fell to the ground. Then my friend Kanamaran ran and took me away before they rose and surrounded me. I thought so. Very brave of you. Well then what happened? Who, who was there? Many dignitaries had come. I don't know all their names. Palyavatarayar had come. His young wife had also come. Father. What can one say about that woman's beauty? Did you see what? Yes. Don't you see? My friend Kanthamaran took me to that temple. I saw there. Of all the women, the youngest queen of Palyavatare was the most beautiful. Amongst the other dark-skinned maidens, that queen's face shone like the full moon. Arambai, Urvazai, Tilathamai, Indrani, Chandrani all fell in love with her. Adiapa. Are you describing it all at once? Then what happened? Did the shouting happen? It happened, it was very good. I thought of you then. Not given to me. What else happened? The dance took place. Devarala and Devarati came to the stage and danced furiously. Did the San Adam come? Did they make any vows? Aha! Uh -huh. Whatever you think may come to pass, rain will fall, the land will grow, said the ascetic. Is that all? He said something more royal. I didn't notice any of it. Damn! Is that so much? You should have noticed, brother. You are a young lad, you seem to be of good heroic prowess. If anyone anywhere speaks of royal matters, you must listen and keep an ear. You're right. I felt the same way this morning. Will you show up in the morning? In the morning, Kanamaran and I came to call it Takerai talking. At night, after I lay down and slept, the guests who had come to the Kadampur mansion gathered and talked about some royal matter. What did you talk about? I don't know that. Gandamaran only said vaguely, but not clearly, that something is going to happen soon. He said, I will tell you then. His speech was mysterious. Why, Swami? Do you know anything? About what? Are all the towns and cities talking about something? There is a comet in the sky, there is some danger to the kingdom, there will be a change in the Chola throne, they are talking about such and such things. This talk has reached the throat region. 
and who and what are big hands joined together, meet often, and who will be next for the title. They are thinking. What do you think? Who will be next for the title? I don't know all that, brother. What have I to do with royal affairs? I am a Vaishnava, a slave to the servants of the Alvars, I wander from town to town singing the hymns I know. All Workadian said this and began to sing, Thirukandan Panmini Kandaan, Van Van interrupted and said, May you be blessed, it will stop. He said, Damn! Are you telling me to stop reading the Diva Tamil Pasuram? Alvarkadian Nambis. I have a suspicion, shall I say it? Say good. Aren't you going to pick up the stick and beat me? You? Can I hit you? I suspect your Vishnavism, Bhakti, Urdhava Bundaram, Bajara Song, all are mere disguises. Oh! What is this talk? Obscenity! Obscenity! No discourtesy, no discourtesy! You disguise yourself like this to hide your lasciviousness. I've seen others like you. People who are obsessed with lasciviousness. I don't know what you see in women like that. Any woman I see disgusts me. Brother. There are some people who wander about in a woman's frenzy. But don't include me among them, I am not a prostitute. You are very wrong to suspect like that. Then why did you ask me to give the straw to the woman who came in the palanquin? What's more, can I give my heart to a woman who has smelled another man? When you told me to come to the Kadampur mansion, was it to see her? Don't say no. Not saying no. But the reason you gave for it is wrong. There is another valid reason. That's a big story. Let's see the horse again. Tell me that story. Let's listen. A story is not a fictional story, it's a real story. A wonderful story. You'll be stunned. Do I have to tell you? Tell me if you like. Yes, I'll tell you. I have to go in a bit of a hurry, but I'll say it anyway. I'll have to ask you for something again. Then you'll do it without knocking, won't you? If it's fair, I will. If you don't like it, don't say anything. No. I must tell you. There is a young wife of that Irani Azura Palyavetarayar, whom I told you to take with me. Her name is Nandini. You will be amazed when you hear her story. You will wonder if there is such a wickedness in the world. With this introduction Alwarkadian begins the story of Nandini. Alwarkadian was born in a village on the banks of River Vegai in the Pandian country. His family were devout Vaishnavas. One day his father went to Nandavana on the banks of a river. He saw a girl child lying there as an orphan. He took the child and came home. The family cherished and saved the baby as it was beautiful and beautiful. They named the child Nandini because she was caught in Nandavan. All were Kadayan used to admire her as his younger sister. Purumal and Bhakti were growing as devotion grew for Nandini. People in the neighborhood believed that she was going to become another Endal and conquer all the devotees. This belief was too much for all Alwarkadian. After her father's death, he took the responsibility of raising her. Both of them went from town to town and spread Vishnavism by singing the hymns of Alvars. Those who heard Nandini singing Pasuram with Tulsi Mela and devotional ecstasy were mesmerized. Once Alwarkadian went on a pilgrimage to Thiruvan Kadam. It's too late to turn back. Then a tragedy happened to Nandini. The final battle between the Pandyas and the Cholas took place near Madurai. The Pandyar army was annihilated. Veera Pandyan had fallen on the battlefield with injuries all over his body. Some of his intimates tried to find him and save him. At night, they brought him to Nandini's house. Nandini was dismayed to see Pandyan's condition and sent him to work. But soon the Chola soldiers discovered it. They surrounded Nandini's house and barged in and killed Veera Pandyan. Enamored with Nandini's beauty, Palyavatarayar took her captive. This happened three years ago. After that Alwarkadian could not see Nandini. Since that day, Alwarkadian has been trying to meet Nandini alone and talk to her and take her free if she wants. So far the effort has not been successful. 
Vandiyadeva's heart melted after hearing this story. He thought for a moment whether to tell Ashwar Kadayan that there was no Nandini in the palanquin in the Kadampur mansion and that the prince was mad Hurandha. Then, something stopped me in my mind. Perhaps this whole story seemed to be Alvar Kadian's imagination. So he did not tell the secret he had learned in the Kadampur mansion. At a short distance, the warrior of Kadampur was coming with a horse. Brother! Will you help me? All were Kadian asked. What can I do to help? Palyavatare has the power to rule this Chola empire. I am an independent individual with no influence. What can I do? Vandiyathevan spoke cautiously. Then he said, Believes. You say you know nothing about royal affairs. If something happens to Sundara Chola Maharaja, can't you tell who is next in line? He said. After hearing this, Vandiyadeva looked eagerly to see if there was any change in the servant's expression, but there was no change in love. What do I know of all that, brother? If you ask Gudan Tajosier, he'll probably tell you. Nambai said. Oh. Is the child fortune teller really that bad? Incredibly wicked. He can tell fortunes, he knows the mind, he knows the affairs of the world, and tells him accordingly. Then see him and leave. Vandiyadeva made up his mind. Since the beginning of time, mankind has been blessed with knowing future events. Kings also have that love, and he also has, sages who are completely renunciates also have, people in the household also have, there are also great geniuses for knowledge, even the superstitions have it. Isn't it surprising that our young hero, who was travelling across the country and city and braved many risks to fulfil a government secret mission, had such a passion?